three and a half weeks ago when I went down through Alexandria, Louisiana. Louisiana. We're down there. They say yeehaw. 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 That's right. <laughs> Step into the microphone. Hey, guys. Good morning, Kyle. Good morning. How are you this morning? I'm doing great. How Matt, about you? Matt, good to have you. Thank you, guys. I hey. think I stopped at a service station down there, and it was 11 o'clock in the morning, and they were serving pork chops, rice, and beans. Oh, probably. <laughs> I imagine. Kyle, tell me about uh, this group and how you guys got together and what you all are doing. And you said that you have got a song, which we're going to hear in just a moment, that uh, did all right on the radio. So tell me about it. Yes, sir. Well, the, the group, we're based out of Alexandria, Louisiana. Um, the group has been together, what, five years? Five and a half five years. Five years. I've, I've been in the band for going on two, I think. Yep. Met long, up on tour. Matt, how long you been there? From the start. Well, then let's talk to you. Yeah. Kyle, no, no. hang on a second. I'll all get right. back to you. <laughs> Matt, tell me about the group and how you guys got together and what uh, what it's all about. I had actually grown up playing drums in church. And, uh, That's why my, I like you. You're a drummer. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, with my dad's Southern Gospel outfit called the Joyful Sounds, and we traveled around, actually made some trips up this way. But uh, when I got to college, we changed styles totally. Uh, sure. I, I oh, I wonder why. I wonder why. We yeah. started a praise team and did some some more contemporary stuff. And for a drummer, man, that that's a world of oh, difference. That's awesome. You know? yeah. And uh, we, I had a really good time with that. And we wanted to record that music. I wanted to show my home church and my family back home. Look at the stuff we're getting to do. This is really different, but really cool to me. Now, where'd you go to college? Louisiana College okay. in Pineville, Louisiana. All right. It's a Baptist uh, Southern Baptist College down right. there. We uh. I tried to get everybody together to record that, and I couldn't ever get the whole team together. So I, I decided, well, I'll just learn all the instruments myself. Did not realize what I was getting into. So I learned the guitar, tried to learn to sing a little bit, and uh, put this thing together. And then near the end of it, we had a few more guys come on. And throughout the process, I was adding people that really knew what they were doing, singing harmonies, playing guitars, things like that. And at the end of the day, we had a band. Uh, never planned on that, but we finished the CD, which we don't even sell anymore. It's so terrible. We recorded it <laughs> in our own home. But uh, when we got done with that, we, we started getting calls to play shows live, and we, we didn't plan on that. And in the first year, we got called for 50 shows without pursuing any of these on our own. That was God opening the door. Like sure. We didn't know what he had planned, but, but that's what was going on. And from there, we've gone from doing praise and worship all the time to writing our own original stuff that's a little more rocking, and uh, well, we just have a good time with it. Now, yeah. how about uh, has the group released some things? Have we uh, seen some things on the radio? And, and, and Yes, sir. The cut we're going to play here in a little bit, You Are There, was our first national release. We've had some regional, local stuff down right. in Louisiana and the South, but uh, You Are There was our first one we released through uh, Christian Radio Weekly, and it topped all four of their charts, awesome. uh, Canada, CHR, AC, and uh, one other one. I can't remember what Super. it is. Super. All right. Great. Well, guys, but I want to tell you something. See, it's one thing for you to sit here and talk about music, and this, but you see, something's got to happen. You cannot be in Christian music. And the roots of what you talked about, Matt and Kyle, we'll find out where you're at before we do the song. We've got to find out there's got to be a motivation. Oh, yeah. Because if there's not a motivation to reach young people with this kind of music and with the word that God's given you, so tell us about that. When did that transformation, when you said, look, I understand who God is, I don't know what Jesus Christ has done for me, and I'm going to share it in this avenue, but it has to happen in this heart right yes, here. Sir. <laughs> Tell us about it. I actually grew up in church, so um, I, and when I got saved, my mom didn't even know because we've been going to church forever or whatever. Uh, I, I don't even know the exact age, and I hate that because a lot of people can pinpoint the date. Excuse me. <laughs> You're the perfect guy. Do not let Satan trick you with that. <laughs> yeah, what you just said it. is a great testimony. Right. Growing in it. Growing. Yes, you don't sir. have to have the marijuana drunken driving record. <laughs> Can I get a hallelujah? Yeah, Amen. Go right can. ahead, brother. All right, Absolutely. Well, probably somewhere around the age of 11 or somewhere in there, except to Christ in my heart. And I actually felt the call into ministry at a young age. I was My pastor was really flexible with me, allowed me to speak for our Christmas service when I was about 16, uh, which is a really big deal. So I got to preach a little bit and travel and do some of that stuff. And uh, since I was playing drums, I never realized, I didn't know what the call was. I just knew I was called. And again, it's that learning process as you go through it. And then when we got to college, uh, I actually played football in college. I know you can't believe it looking at my frame, but uh, I blew out both my knees, and then I was looking for something to fill that void, and, and music just became more of a, a prominent role. And, and like I said, we never planned to travel and, and minister like that, but God kept opening the doors, and when we see the change that we're making in people's lives, especially in kids, it, it just gives us a lot of strength to keep going. Sure. Kyle, the same question. Oh, man. I was raised in church. I was, I'm was i from Dallas, Texas, yeah. and uh, I was raised in a Southern Assembly of God church, uh, my grandma played the organ, you know, my mom sang, and I got my first guitar when I was nine. So they, they stuck me up on stage, you know, gave me a little amplifier, said, here, play. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. okay, well, <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll see how this goes. But, uh, no, I'm, I'm doing this music, man. It's, it really is for the kids. And how'd I mean, you get hooked up with this guy? Oh, man. Pocatello, Idaho, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah, well, they were, uh, they were on a tour called the Extreme Tour, going, doing the entire West Coast, and, uh, I was just out helping my cousin's band, who is now 
My Matt's wife. wife. <laughs> they met on the tour, but I was out helping their band just tech in, doing guitar work and stuff. And their guitar player at the time ended up having some problems and had to quit. So they're like, Kyle, you want to come play? <laughs> sure. Hey, I'm not, not doing nothing. nothing. Yeah, I'm yeah. not doing anything. Well. So you're the guy that does the fuzz guitar that my co host yeah, here yes, loves. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There's yeah. me and one other guy. So we got two of them. <laughs> hey, buddy. It's double trouble for you. I had a fuzz guitar. I had a youth director from First Baptist Church, and we had about an intro to a song that had to be three and a half minutes of fuzz guitar. <laughs> and so when it was all over, I looked at the youth guy here, John King, and oh, I yeah. said, John. I said, what do you mean? He said, that's the best part of the whole song <laughs> right there. Well, set this song up for yeah. us, Matt. Let's hear it and uh, tell me about it, where it came. Uh, is this one you wrote? Did you find it somewhere? Tell me the background of this song and the message. Uh, we used to have a guy a little older than us. He's around 43 or 44, I guess. His name's Bryant Baum. He actually wrote this song. He used to travel with us and sing the harmony and play the mandolin. He's one of those guys recruited on the first album to kind of help out and tell me what I was doing wrong. And uh, he doesn't travel with us anymore. He uh, just got married a little while back and staying with his family and stuff. But sure. he wrote this song. And I think it's so self-explanatory, I don't think it takes a whole lot of leading into it. Well, let's find out about it. The group's name is Altered, right? Yes, sir. And the song is? You Are There. You Are There. Here on Good Morning Ozarks, these guys are in the studio with us. Let's listen. It is fun. Oh, yeah, I like it. Well, I was dead in my sin and alone in my sorrow with no hope for today and none left for tomorrow when you captured my soul and made me all your own and now i know that i'll never be alone cause you are there in my darkest hour and you are there when i need your power if there is one thing that I know for sure When I need you, Jesus You put me back on my feet once again You are there in my darkest hour And you are there when I need your power If there is one thing that I know for sure That's why I know 